I got a BBC uh, secondhand BBC Micro. It cost me two hundred and twenty pounds. Um, it was very beaten up, so it had been a Model A. So one of the interesting things about the BBC, and this is something we've inherited at Raspberry Pi, um, was uh, they had the Model A and Model B. The Model A was the two hundred and twenty-nine pound machine. The Model B, the three hundred and ninety-nine machine. Sixteen um, uh, K of RAM, thirty-two K of RAM. The A was kind of very depopulated. Lots of optional features on the motherboard didn't have uh, didn't have chips uh, on them. And the machine I had had been a Model A and then had been partially upgraded to a Model B. So it had got the memory upgrades, I think. I think it had got the printer port. It hadn't got the U port. Um, and there were sort of various various sort of tells that it had been a Model A. Um, and yeah, it was it was, it was a little unreliable. Um, it, you had to hit it. Um, I still don't know to this day. I still can't come up with a, with a good um, kind of a physical explanation as to why you had to hit it on the top over the power supply and then flick the power switch within a second of hitting it in order to make it boot up. Uh, but yeah, that that work uh, because of maintenance. And it had one RAM chip which was a little bit dud uh, and had a um, I don't know if it had a, a, a row or a column. Uh, I guess probably a column of, of bits, a dead sense amp. Um, and so you had um, some predictable locations in memory that didn't store the right value. And if you had a high resolution, if you displayed a high resolution um, screen, fortunately it was quite quite high up in memory where there's mostly just graphics. And so if you put a, um, a white screen up, then you'd have a little kind of barcode of dead uh, of dead bits uh, in there. If you edited a large document in the word processor, you, you would get um, a corruption at predictable locations. So if I, I used to use it to do my schoolwork as well as programming it, Used to use to do my schoolwork, and the last thing I do after printing out my schoolwork was to go to go through at the uh, the, the required places of the biro uh, and edit the um, <laughs> edit the, um, the the put the correct letters in uh, uh, to the text. I guess I was about nine years old, and yeah, it was just pure competitiveness. Really, it was I had a friend who could write computer programs and i wanted to i didn't want so i didn't want a friend to be able to do a thing i couldn't do so uh, and i'm always very motivated by writing games even to this day i'm very motivated by writing computer games um i was uh i, I wrote games all the way through my childhood um i started a games company was at university sold that started another games company um kind of realized the games industry isn't really something i want to do professionally it's a very it's a very tough industry it was a tough industry then and i think it's become a tougher industry now um but and so i ended up doing silicon stuff mostly as an adult but for recreation i still write computer games a lot um uh, and so that was always that's always been a big motivator for me and the interesting thing of course in the era was that commercial computer games were pretty simple um and so as a child you could make a thing quite quickly which was you know you're not these days you're not going to write call you're not going to write call of duty or grand theft auto right um but as a child then you could write something which was not that much worse than what you could go and pay money for in the shops The BBC Special, of course, because BBC Basic is a particularly good, is a particularly strong uh, language. The BBC has a has a much more fully developed um, kind of operating system environment um, than most 8-bit computers. You know, it has an entire, I mean, you can see as much as anything else. You can see that by how much of the address space is devoted to, uh, to built-in software. So you've got a, an entire 16K operating system, an entire 16K basic interpreter, where, say, uh, Spectrum packs both of those things into a single 16K, into a single 16K ROM. So it has a very... Um, it has a very uh, well-developed dialect of basic, a very structured dialect of basic. It has a very high-performance dialect of basic. And, um, uh, a lovely thing about doing Raspberry Pi is I've got to meet the people who were involved um, in, in, in the BBC Micro uh, project. And obviously Sophie did an amazing job. Sophie Wilson did an amazing job uh, of, of developing uh, BBC Basic, uh, Atom Basic, and then BBC Basic. Um, so it's a great, it's a great language. Um, it's very fast. So if you're interested in writing games, it's much, much faster. You benchmark it against other 8-bit basics. It's very, very quick. Uh, so you can do a lot while staying in BASIC. And then, of course, it has a built-in assembler.
is about the only platform that I'm aware of that has a built-in assembler. So you can switch backwards and forwards between typing basic and typing assembler, and you can you can you can uh, you can assemble some code. So you can write your game, and if a little bit of it isn't fast enough, you can carve a little bit of out a, a little bit out into assembly language to get a little bit more performance. Um, it's a great. It's a. I'm not sure how much of this was intentional, how much of this was just serendipity, but it's a wonderful ladder machine. It's a wonderful machine that kind of pulls you up from, you know, 10 print I'm the best, 20 go to 10 into writing assembly language. The BBC Micro gave me my life, gave me my adult life, gave me my career. Um, I can do the things I can do because of the BBC Micro. It shaped my thinking. It got in there early enough in my childhood that it shaped my thinking. Um, uh, I'm enormously grateful to it. And it's one of those things where when I think about Raspberry Pi, and we sold sold 40 million Raspberry Pis now. So we've sold sort of um, 20, 25 times as many Raspberry Pis as there are BBC Micros. And I sort of think out of those 40 million Raspberry Pis, if, if there's one person who looks back in 25, 30 years, 40 years time on Raspberry Pi, the same way I look back on the BBC Micro, then I'll be pretty happy.